Hey, how are you? Matt Watson here. So I'm sat in my lovely Porsche 911 GT3 RS. Now I've had this car for about three months now, but I've been wondering how much is this car worth? I've been keeping an eye on used prices. I've been watching what's been happening to GT3 RS's 992s as they've been coming on the market and what people have been asking for them. But I want to find out exactly what my car is worth. So today, I'm going to speak to some experts to find out. The first place I've come to to find out how much my GT3 RS is worth is Rensport in the Cotswolds. It's owned by my friend Paul. Now, he doesn't actually trade in these sort of cars. He resto mods old 911s, but quite a few of his customers trade out a new car such as this into some of his cars. So he should have an idea if any have been sold, and if so, for how much. I'd like to introduce you to Paul. How you doing, Paul? All right, mate. I hope you like my car. First off, I want you to tell me what you think of it, the spec. I mean, you think I've got a good spec or a bit of a disappointing or hard to sell spec? Well, it's a great spec. It's an RS to start with, but what have you done to the paint? This is a matte PPF. So it's, it's PPF film over the top, not a wrap, but it's slightly opaque. So you get this, what's called a stealth effect. What do you think? Each to their own. You don't like it? I prefer the shiny. Really? You prefer yeah, the shiny, yeah. shiny? Also, I've had these wingtips painted. Yeah, they look cool. They look better than in yeah. the black, don't they? Yeah. And I've had gold RS badging. I'll give you that as well. Instead of black. It yeah. was black originally. Yeah. Okay, so you don't like the PPF finish, but that can be whipped off and you get GT silver then. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the combo, the silver and the gold wheels? It's a good combo. So you quite like the colour scheme. Yeah. Let's have a little look on the inside. Oh, actually, while, while we're here, look at this. I want to show you this. Like normally a standard, you get like red light at the back and red here. Do you prefer it in like this smoked effect? It stands out from the rest of them, doesn't it? <laughs> right. Let's, let's go this side. Have a wee. Oh God, it's locked. It's locked. I've got the key though. Here we go. So I kept it kind of quite simple. I didn't go for any like loud colours and I just kept it like silvery and... It's cool because it's always going to appeal to everybody. The ones that have got yellow seat belts and yellow roll cages and stuff, it's going to sort of put a lot of people off from that. Yeah, there so, is one thing that I'm not so sure about. I went for white dials. Have a look at the dials. No, they're all right. Better than yellow ones. See, I actually think the yellow ones look nah, better. No? Nah, nah. Really? So yeah, it looks like you've got a Vauxhall Corsa then. <laughs> 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 a very expensive Vauxhall Corsa. Yeah. And I went for the Visat pack, so you get the carbon fibre roll cage, you get the Alcantara on the dash, you get the mag wheel, so these are magnesium wheels, which you better not curb. You get something for your money extra then, don't you? It's not cheap for the Visat kit, No, it's, it? I think it's just it's about £29,000, but there's a lot of stuff. These mag wheels, actually. That's most of it, isn't it? It's most of it. If yeah. you were to buy these, like if you smash them, 20 grand for a set. Scary. It's, it's very scary. You also get look, the exposed carbon fibre like on the roof and on the bonnet. And look, you can see it's PPF, not a wrap. Yeah, but you see, I'd be looking at it thinking, is that like a carbon wrap? Oh, now? come off it. <laughs> Stop trying to do my car down. What's the matter with you? <laughs> no, you can't really put it down. It's it's cool. Because you've got a GT3 RS, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a 991 in the same colour, but it's shiny. It's shiny. You prefer yeah. it shiny. Yeah. It looks good shiny, to tell you the truth. And I was like, um and ah in between just the normal C3 PPF and this stealth. And I just thought this made the cards look a little bit more it, unique. It does look good on this. I, I wouldn't have done it on mine, but I think on, on the 992, it looks good. I do have a question for you, though, Paul. Have you got wing envy? Does yours like move like that? No, it doesn't. No, no it's see. just fixed. Yeah. yeah. But it has got big Porsche letters across yeah, it. Yeah, but so. look at this. Are the... Oh, you got it underneath? Yeah, look. Oh, yeah. I'm going to see if I can do it. Wait here. Let's see if I can do the wing. Have a look now, see if it does it. Yay! Yeah. Has it moved? Oh, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, so you can be like all those 911 turbo boys that park the car with the spoiler up, can't you? Yeah, and that's exactly what I do. When I'm driving yeah. along sometimes, I flash that's, my Porsche yeah, logo at people. Yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> That writing's a bit oversized for what you get as standard. Because the guys that did the stickers. The spoiler's not big enough, you need to make it. I big need, enough I so need. You can read it from like. Exactly, from so about. You can read it from London. <laughs> so you can read it from yeah. about two miles away. Right. It's just a great sounding card. Does yours sound better? Yes. Because your no, car. one sounds better. And the reason for all, that all is those silly emissions things going on. Yeah, you don't anymore. need to worry about the emissions no. so much. So what year's your car? 2016. When it was new, roughly, any idea what it cost? It would have been about 165,000 at the time, I reckon. And how much did you pay for yours? 159,000. So it's kind of like held its value. And how many miles has it done? 
It's done 9,000. 9,000? Yeah. Right. So it's the same price as it was eight years ago. So these things, the RSs really hold their value. Much better than a GT3. Yeah, because I had the GT3, the normal one before, and they do drop and they steadily drop. The RS is in its own little bubble. Ah. There's too many GT3s, especially 992s, <laughs> they're everywhere, aren't they? <laughs> There's quite a lot. But they really held their value for quite a while, didn't they? They were like up at over 200,000. I think that was because of the production problems they were having, wasn't it? post-Covid sort of stuff going on and the first hype, which but I think happened with the old GT3s, but they had that sort of engine problem with them blowing up. The 3.8. The rest of it, yeah. yeah. It's a similar sort of thing with the, with the modern GT3. I think the, when these came out, they people wanted these, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, but there's not many about, is there? No. However, you do know of a couple of people that have had them and have sold them. Yeah. Because you see lots of different like prices on the internet and so on and so forth, but it's what you can actually sell it for, isn't it? Yeah, it's all very well seeing cars for sale for 420, 450 grand, but uh -huh. is that just for sale to keep the wife happy because she's told him to sell it? Yeah, so he's got this theory, right, yeah. that people put Which... them up for sale <laughs> that just because they, you know, their other half is not happy that they've just spent a load of money on a GT3 RS. I can't relate to that, obviously. <laughs> uh, so they put it up to sale, like they're trying to sell it, but they price them a bit high so that, so that yeah, it doesn't actually sell. Yeah, i to make money out of it. Yeah. yeah. And they don't. But no. you know someone has sold a car to buy one of your cars. What did they sell it for? A sensible guy, you see. Yeah, <laughs> he went for something He older. sold it for 400,000. And that was quite recently, wasn't it? Yeah. So 400 grand actually paid. And what spec was his? His was a similar spec to this one. Was it silver? I think it was black. What do you think of the black ones? I wouldn't buy a black one because my favourite colour is silver. So it's, it's, a, it's a personal thing, isn't it, really? So 400 grand sold. How many miles had it, had it done? It hadn't done any. Oh, so it was pretty much like... Yeah, I think it had done like what you've done, 500 miles. Okay, so not even running yeah, yet. No. So similar, so similar car, quite recently, actually sold 400,000 in black. Was yeah. it a Visac car? I imagine it was. It was, yeah. The only worry a lot of people have selling them for that much money is you're never going to get on the list again, isn't it? He's not bothered. He's buying one of our old cars. <laughs> so now he's gone for something <laughs> now, classic. Now, now he can afford it. <laughs> one day, these will be classic, won't they? The way you've got to look at it is even in sort of 10 years' time, it's still going to be the same price as what you paid for it now. So that's a pretty good investment for any modern car, isn't it? Now, before I go and speak to a real expert in valuing cars, such as my 911 GT3 RS, because he buys and sells supercars for a living, I need to tell you something about my car. You see, if I run a car vertical report on it, Something you should do if you're thinking about buying any used car, you will see that it has outstanding finance. Obviously, I didn't have £220,000 spare to buy it outright, so I bought it on finance. It's the same thing with my GR Yaris, even though it was a lot cheaper. I've run a car vertical report on that, and you can see that the only flag is the fact that it has outstanding finance finance. Now, Car Vertical can check for other things as well, whether the car's been stolen or been damaged. For instance, here's a report on another GR Yaris, which has been in an accident, and you can see photos of it after the accident, before it was repaired. Another thing you can check with Car Vertical is if the car's mileage has been wound back. Here's a Vauxhall Astra, which has obviously had its mileage wound back. Oh my gosh. Also, if you look closer at the report, it's also listed as being damaged in the past. That is one car you definitely wouldn't want to buy. Now, to make sure that you don't make a mistake when buying a used car, go to Car Vertical, right? And use the discount code Watson for 10% off. I'll put a link in the description and the pinned comment. In fact, if you bought a used car and you didn't do a car vertical check on it, maybe you should do one now, just to be sure. Now, if you want to do that right away, just click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen to get a car vertical. Now, let's get on with the video. I've now come to Phillip Island Performance Cars in the Cotswolds. Now, Phil is a car dealer. He deals in prestige and supercars, and his business is buying and selling cars such as this. So if anyone knows the true value of this car, it's Phil. This is Phil. How are you doing, Phil? Very good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. A little bit nervous about what you're going to say about my car. Oh, really? We've got it here in part of your showroom. Yep. And we've got some other cars here. So it's a McLaren 600 LT, right? Yep. What's that up for at the moment? That sold for 150. 150. What have these been like? What would they list? About 250? They've dropped. Obviously, the whole market's suffering as uh -huh. its interest rates. So prices have come down across the board. I think there's signs that there is uh, some improvement in the market because we've sold a few recently. Really? Okay. Yeah, which is nice to see. 
This one, probably 95 that's up for. So we've had a lot of inquiries on that. It's one a 570 a, GT. That's a 570 GT MSO collection. So one of 100. What are McLaren's like? How have they fared in the market with like interest rates going up, like you say? I think it's the same across the board. I mean, McLaren's always been not the easiest. Saying that, we've always done really well with McLaren's. So if we get McLaren's in, I sell them quite quick. 765 LT Spider, I think I've sold that. So you've got a 765 LT? Yeah, upstairs. Okay. Yeah. Right. And that's an XP. So one of three prototypes. So what was that price? Uh, that's up for 375. 375. But did they come down as well as part of? It would have come down, yeah. Everything across the board has come down to be Porsches? Fair. How have Porsches fared? Porsche is always great for residual. Okay. Are they better than McLaren? Oh, yeah. Hands oh, down. Oh, yeah. That's what we like to hear. Okay. Hands down. Yeah, they are. I mean, the thing is with the, the 3RS though, I think obviously when they started coming to market recently, dealers lost their nerve too quickly and started reducing the price. When did you buy this one? September. September. That, that's when it arrived. I actually spec'd it way out in February. It's supposed to have it in June. Yeah. It got delayed. I think it might have been delayed just because of the race tech sun visors. That's what it was. I'm not entirely sure there was that and they're waiting for that bit of trim to yeah. complete it. And then there was a holiday at the factory in August, oh, yeah. which delayed it again. So I got it in September and I've had it about three months. I remember when I was waiting for it to arrive, I saw some prices, they're like almost half a mil. I was gonna say, probably around that time, be about 450. Uh -huh. So then we, hours, we had for 450 and then we reduced to 420. But then obviously more came to market and the prices were being driven down by the dealers. And the trouble is you have to follow suit almost. Yep. You know, There's I, still not many about, is there? There's not a huge amount, no. We got a black one. Yeah. And when that came, just three days before, another dealer listed one. And it, I, was, I was so annoyed because I was just thinking, literally that three days when the first black one to market, because it was the first black one to market, as far as I'm aware, and it was Vizac as well. So that went to market, and I think that probably sold a lot quicker than ours did. But ours is now sold. Okay. Right, we'll come on to that in a moment. You've got these here. Upstairs, you've got a 765 LT, you said, yeah. which is sold. What other cars have you got it's upstairs? not quite sold. I think you've sold oh, okay. it. Okay, you think you've sold so, it. So hopefully he's watching this. And okay. He would have bought it by <laughs> then. It. There's an Aston Martin DB. 11, 488 GTB, SF90 Stradale. How's nine. the SF90 done? No comment. Not great. <laughs> Not amazing. What were they, like 400 grand? I mean, 450, it depends on the spec. It, they went down and they came back up. They're kind of, I think, fixed around the 400 at the moment. What's a bad supercar that people have bought and they like really do tank? Probably a GT Silver 3 RS 992. Shut up. <laughs> so Ferraris, have they held their value better than McLaren's? It's all plateaued because of the interest rates. Uh -huh. So this year, especially last six months, you know, it has been quiet. I have seen a turnaround recently in the last couple of months where you know, people started spending more money. And I think what's going to happen come spring, people are going to have held on to their cars for longer when they normally change once a year. The interest rates have come down a, a tiny bit. So I think, yeah, next spring is, is a time when we'll see another surge. So it could so. bounce up again. So what? this could be uh, a low point. I don't, I don't know if it will bounce back up. I think the cars will probably remain where they are. Okay. But I think people are going to just accept the fact that the interest rates are what they are. Right. So let's get on to my car then. So yeah. what I'm going to get you to do first of all is, yeah. I mean, you'll probably recognize what specs on it, but point out some things that might go against it and things that will go in its favor when working out the price on it. What I would say would go against this. The decals you put on it, I'm sorry to say. They look cool. What's wrong with the gold decals? They, do, you know, do you know who told me to do them in gold? Who? Andreas Preininger. He knows And he told you these end caps. He told well. me to do the end caps. Yeah. The end cap definitely looks better. Yeah. That is that. I like, no, I completely agree with you. Yeah, that that I think they should have done that actually from factory. I would say that works. They wanted them from factory, and if they do a point two second yeah. gen, they might just have it as standard. Yeah. So that's not going to devalue it. I wouldn't say it's going to devalue it. But you it, think no. the decals will? Yeah, I can take yeah. them off. I know exactly. If you put them on and put it, because they're not genuine Porsche OEM, I bet. I've actually got genuine ones yeah. sat at Porsche GB waiting for me. It's just that they were delivered too late well, for when go. I was doing the video on this. So I had yeah. these other ones put on, which I'll cut to spec yeah but they're not the oem ones but the oem ones no one else can get them so Ooh, they're from port they're fr there we go does that add value <laughs> well, yeah so they're from the yeah, factory huge. but i don't think they're available to the general public though i could be wrong or is that you're showing off now aren't a little you? bit yeah. showing yeah. off yeah for me when it's a special edition i think it needs to be in its original, original so black spec. i would say so yeah oh, it doesn't look as good it may not look as good but that's the spec, isn't it? That's what it's spec with. So if I want to take these off, mm. to put other ones on, I think the decals are like, if I just want the black ones, they're like 500 to 700 yeah, so quid. Yeah, something stupid. How much are these taking off the value? It depends. I mean, obviously you could put this online and someone could love it and just, just buy it with these on. Uh -huh. But I think because it's a special edition, a lot of the times when we found it, 
people want it as it's come from the factory. What um, about my PPF then, which is matte? PPF, I think, is fine. I mean, this is protects the car because essentially it's removable. So someone's got an option if they were to buy it, they could take it off and they could put gloss PPF. So it's essentially GT Silver. But they've um, got to then pay to do that, which is quite a bit of money. Yeah, but it's, if this was a wrap, I think it's a different story. The fact it's PPF, no panels are being removed, and this is essentially just on top of the GT Silver. People want a car protected. Also looks awesome, don't you think, matte? Yeah, I do think. Do you prefer it, it in matte? Or do you prefer it in the gloss? GT Silver looks really good, but I actually prefer it in this satin PPF for this car for the spec you've gone for. With the, the gold decals. Dime, yeah. <laughs> do you and personally the like the gold decals or not? Do you want my honest opinion? Yeah, of course. No, no, no. It's not. It's not me. I go with your but hair. Then, <laughs> <laughs> I really like the gold. I think the gold works well with the silver. And even if you don't like that, I don't. I tell you what, I would like it more if this gold yeah matched. Yeah, it doesn't quite it doesn't, doesn't quite match. Actually, yeah. if you look at the Porsche pyro red to the red, it doesn't yeah, quite match. Yeah. If you look at the blue to the blue, it doesn't quite match. In terms of colours to sell, then GT Silver is it an easy one to sell? But I'm not a, a silver car man. I don't necessarily like silver cars. I think it works on this because you've got the nice contrast with obviously all the aero. Let's have a little look inside and get your opinion on the interior. What is this? Was this your first choice? Did you have a few choices or you so, kind of... So originally I was going to get the car in flat white with um, pyro red and red interior. So like red seat belts, red, 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 red. Nice. My missus said, no, get it in silver. She's very monochrome, but she has taste and she always looks better than Does me. Does she like the gold? She didn't want the gold. <laughs> she wanted silver. Andreas Preuninger told me to do it and I figured that he knew what he was on about, but maybe he's better at engineering cars than designing them. Yeah, well blame him. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think this is not. I, it, it, to be honest, I think less is more. You've gone for the white dials. Yeah. That's, yes, I love this race tech. Yeah, so that comes as part of the Vice app pack. Yeah. Interesting fact, right? In the UK, can you see how we've got race techs on the front of the dash, but the top part is actually leather? Now, if you get a, a car that's left hand drive, it's full race techs across the dash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason is we, when there was like a delay. Uh, on Visac, and one of the reasons for the delay was the race techs. They couldn't get enough of it to put on the dash for right hand drive cars. Yeah. And so they compromised and just had the front bit done. When the so supply eased and they could get it no problem, they decided not to do it for the full dash because it wouldn't be fair on the early cars that had come through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just kept them out for the UK, so it's different to the European cars. Boring, aren't I? I've got aluminium pedals as well, which I think. I did nice. notice them, yeah. And I've got um, Porsche puddle lighting, and that's not such a, an event, you know. Yeah, look necessary. at that. I do have lift, yeah. which I think you have to have on one of these cars, right? 100%. Would not having lift make it a lot harder to sell? I would say so. Most car, most supercars, if you've not got lift in them, it does make them harder to sell. I've got reversing camera and I've got the full matrix LED headlights, yeah, yeah. not just the mid-spec ones. So when you ordered this, what was your, you know, what was the thing that you wanted most of all? I had to have Visac. And the reason yeah. I had to have Visac was that just this. Is that it? Not the carbon bonnet no, and the roof and stuff? I don't actually like the carbon bonnet so much. No, so this is another thing that Andrea said. I should yeah. paint it. But I think you, I think it's the Visac is, is the one, obviously, you'd always... Yeah, you have to have the Visac. You get the mag wheels, carbon fibre with suspension bits, carbon fibre roll cage. Yeah. Right, then. Before you give me a value on this, yeah. let's have a look at the black comma you've got, because I want to make sure that I chose the right colour. Oh, here we go. Yeah, watch this. I'm a little bit nervous that I'm going to prefer it than mine. Ooh. Initial thoughts? It's black, it's very black. <laughs> the plastic at the front doesn't look so bad because it blends in with the bodywork, but the plastic bits down the side, like the spats, don't stand out quite as well because it's black, so it's... Mm. The Visac element, the um, carbon fibre bonnet, doesn't stand out quite as obviously on my car, but in some ways I prefer it on the black car because it's not so high it, contrast. Would you put gold decals on the side of this? I think it would look wicked with gold. I actually really like it. It's a tough one because I, I thought about black, but I've seen a black with red, yeah. pyro red and red decal. I really like that. I, I'll pick out something I don't like, first of all. I didn't have the quarter lights tinted on mine. I think it looks weird when you've got this just normal transparency, then that's like darkened out. But other than that, it, it looks pretty much the same spec as mine. You know, I really like it in black, but I think with the stealth effect, I'm going to say this on, I'm not going to say I don't like mine as much, yeah. but that looks meaner. But that is sold now, okay. so you can't have that. I can't, <laughs> we could have done a swap yeah. Um Yeah, I do really like that. Ah, it's tough. If I'd gone for a basic car, yeah. what are they going for, do you think? A basic car? Yeah, one without Visac, one without carbons. 
what are they? Probably normally 50 under, aren't they? Okay, 50 less. I would say so. Okay. Uh, and it's ceramics is optional on these, aren't they? Yeah. So you, you waited for that. Yeah. For the, uh, for the ceramics. Too right. Yeah. You've got to definitely. have ceramics on this car, right? Well, especially if you're looking to keep this. Yeah. So let's come back to mine then. I want you to tell me what you think I could get for this. As it is, as it is like this, or would you... you I you... could put the decals back on, you know, if it's going to yeah. make it easier to sell it. I can do that. 750 quid. It's not a, not a problem. I'd still list this for 385 probably. Well, there's definitely profit in that. Yeah. <laughs> that price with like almost 500 miles, 450. Please. Does it matter much with the mileage difference? Like from two, like what's that got on it? Delivery, that's 19 miles. So I think it does make a difference. Massive. Wait, depends what someone's looking. If there's someone's looking to buy it for an investment and just put it into a collection and yeah. not really drive it, then yeah. But if someone's looking to buy it to use, it depends on, on what you're buying it for. If you go over a thousand miles, is that quite a? I would say because thousand, obviously you need a thousand miles to, to break it in. Yes, yeah, so it's really. not broken in yet. One of these now, if it was 1500 miles, let's say, probably I would be t- saying to you 370, 375. Okay, so not the end of the world yeah. if you want to get out and enjoy the car. But for this one here, 385, the value of this, if I change the stickers. If I don't change the stickers? Four euro 50. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 380 with the stickers? Uh, to, to be honest, I. It depends. Someone might love them as much as you. Three ninety with the stickers. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think you're never you're never, never going to be in a position where you're going to be worried about losing. I'll never lose money on this. I don't think not for the next five years. No. Well, there you go. Thank you very much for your time, Phil, for talking me through like the various kind of prices on these cars and what works and what doesn't work. Three hundred and eighty-five thousand pounds. I think it's worth every penny. But then I would say that wouldn't I? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Click on my little face, not this face, the other face, to subscribe and click on the video windows to watch some more videos. Thanks for watching.